what God gives us. Like, like. It gives us understanding unto the same thing. Only the word of God can change your world. As you listen to this broadcast by Christian Information Network Ministry, your world shall shout. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning. We are grateful for what you are going to do in our lives and Lord, in our family, in everything that has to do with us. I pray, Holy Spirit, you will visit us. Holy Spirit, visit us. Let your work come expressly and let your work bring transformation to our lives. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. I read from the book of 2 Kings chapter 1. Take my test from 2 Kings chapter 1. From verse 1. Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. Now Hazael fell through the lattice of his upper room in Samaria and was injured. So he sent messenger and, sent and said to them, Go inquire of Baal Zebel, Baal Zebel, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover from this injury. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria. And say to them, is it because there is no God in Israel that you are going to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord, you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. So Elijah departed. And when the messenger returned to him, he said to them, why have you come back? So they said to him, a man came up to meet us and said to us, go return to the king who sent you. And say to him, Thus saith the Lord, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are sending to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Therefore, you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. Then he said to them, What kind of man was it who came up to meet you and told you this word? So they answered him, A hairy man wearing a leather belt around his waist. That is what they call, you know, girdle of leather eh, there in the old King James Version. And he said, it is Elijah the Tishbite. Then just listen very well. Then the king sent to him a captain of 50, with his 50 men. So he went up to him and there was sitting on the top of a hill and he spoke to him, man of God, the king has said, come down. So Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, If I am a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. And fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his 50. Let's stop there. Praise God. I'm talking this morning on contending by fire. Contending by fire. Now, you see, from the story we have read here, you can see about two major actors or two major characters. After the death of Ahab, the person who took over from Ahab as the king of Israel is a pity that people don't learn from history. People don't learn lessons. There are errors that can be committed over the years. Some people will keep on you know, committing the same errors. Look at our nation, for example. You know, at times, if you know the fire that is burning some of these politicians internally, you will pity them. Some of them are losing their children, prime children in, the day, you know, in their lifetime. 
because of the evil, because of the wrong thing they keep on doing, keep on going in the wrong path. How can a country who has gotten independent since 1960, how can we not get a leader who is ready to do it right? You understand what is going on in other nations of the world. And of course, you cannot come and put it to place in your country as a leader. But you discover that many of them, the wrong part that some leaders have taken either from the presidency or the governorship, you see another generation repeating the same error. You cannot continue to do the same thing the same way and you expect there is going to be a change or you expect that the God of heaven will keep quiet will not judge you one day. And that's why I know that the year we are in is a year of judgment. It doesn't matter who's ever become president or governor or whatever. But one thing it is certain, there are things head will rule this year. Because Jehovah the God that answered by fire, he will answer the prayer of the saints. Something is going to happen. Whosoever gets there, if they don't get it right, those that will die will die. Those that will live will live in the name of Jesus Christ. It is not a threat. It is because God gives people long rope to pull. And by the time comes into the scene, the story changes. And I know that the prayer of the church will not go in vain this year. God of mercy will have mercy on us. He will show us mercy. But that's why, like I was warning in the Yoruba service, I was telling them that, look, if you want to climb up, if you want to lift you up, you must be careful of your character. You must be careful of what you do. If you don't go in line with the word of God, if you don't honor God, if you don't have clean hands and a pure heart, because those are the condition of those who will arise, who will come to the heel of the Lord, those that were promoted by and lifted by God. And the Bible says that those who do not, you know, go into lies, those who do not cheat. I cited an example which I believe the Holy Spirit wanted me to talk about. As if, for example, you know the way market men are doing. Say, ah, sorry, I want to go and do something. So please help me look at my market. Abi, oh, how much is this sold? It's two thousand naira. Oh, it is two thousand naira. Okay, but you know the Nigerian way of a uh, system of uh, business. You will not start with that two thousand naira. You can start even with five thousand naira. Shout hallelujah. Our, our domestic staff, a woman who, who comes to clean the house and cook, I said, so he saw how sir, you want to buy fish. He said, I, sir, he doesn't know how to, mommy was at home. I said, don't worry, let me come out. He brought the house person. And he said, the fish, you know, the one that they put sticks to this, uh, all right. And he said, he said, 6,000. He said, 6,000, 2,000, 6,000, 3, 6,000. Uh, so when I got when I came out, I said six thousand. I said, "What about two thousand? I know the woman must be shocked. <laughs> Praise God! I said two thousand. Ah, that one said, "Oh God, okay, this and this and this and this." I said, "Don't worry, I'll put five hundred naira for you." Praise God! Uh, you know, I said even for me paying cash in this time around, no be transfer. I won't give to you. You know, I don't do you good. Praise the Lord! Now, eventually, I bought it for two thousand five. The woman was ah. He says, sir, you know, that's it. that's it. But you know, that is our own system of market. It's not like abroad where they have put price tag. Are you listening to me? Now, somebody now say, please help me to sell my market. And uh, you are there. You have your own market. Maybe you sell another item and you are helping that person. Oh, how much is it? Say it is 4,000. The owner says you should sell for 2,000. But by bargaining and the person is own bargaining power is not strong enough. And he now said, ah, uh, okay, pay 2005. And the person paid 2005. Now, if you take that 500 naira and say it is where somebody works that he eats, you're a thief. You will pocket that 500. You know, when you bring that 2000, the person will say, ah, Thank you very much, Abi. He has made his gain. But now, if you are a light in the midst of darkness, you will not cheat. That market is not yours. But that's what some people will do. You will have pocketed 500 naira. And give 2,000 naira to the owner. You are a thief. You are not straightforward. And whatsoever a man sow, he shall reap. If you are wicked to other people's children, 
And you think that people will not be wicked to, to your own children in the future. You are telling lies. All the people that are so making people to suffer in our country, don't worry. They may have all the million, they will still suffer at last. And if I'm not praying, I'm always making statement, Bible statement. <laughs> Amen. The Bible says, say unto the wicked, he shall not wear with him. Am I the one that said it? He says, say unto the wicked, any man that is wicked, he shall not be well with him. But be careful. It is not only people outside that are wicked. There are people that are in the church that are equally wicked. If you don't show compassion, it's a sign of wickedness. If you eat in your house, you don't think about other people. If they are also good, if their welfare is good, it is wickedness. The time we are living in Nigeria is a time for us to share. It's a time for us to show love, to be practical with your love. The little you have, <clears throat> no, share it. Do something to alleviate the suffering of others. This is the time that God will remember you. This is the time that God will take you to greater height because you are showing compassion. You are having the heart of Jesus, the heart of Christ. Say amen. amen. So I am saying that if you don't learn, if you continue, if you go, you know, the thing in Israel, it is funny. They will say, hey, so and so took over from so and so, and he did wickedness according to the doings of the king. And you begin to answer, <clears throat> are they senseless? You know what kills somebody? You still go in that path. You keep on going to worship idol. idol. Now, Ahab is gone. This man took over. He's sick. He fell down. He injured himself. Now, he wanted to find out about the future. Hallelujah. And now, he said for him, <clears throat> he knew that there is prophet in Israel. He knew that Elijah was in existence. But instead of going to Elijah, he went, sent to Ekron. Ekron is in Philippine, in Philistine. It's a land in Philistine to go and ask from idol worshiper, Beelzebub, whether he's going to live or he's going to die. And God spoke to Elijah. I said, Elijah, go and meet. Some people are coming. Praise God. They are not going to Elijah. They are going to Ekron, Abi, to go and you know, inquire. But God sent Elijah to intercept them. Elijah said, go and tell the person that sent you that he will not survive. He will die. Thank you. He said, go and tell him he's going to do what? He will die. And they came back. And the king said, ah, so fast, have you gone to where I sent you? He said, as we are going, we met a man on the way. They did not know the name of the man. But they were able to describe the man. May you get to a level in your life that your enemy will describe you correctly. They will know that you are a different person. You are different in the society. In your character, you are different. In your lifestyle, you are different. Above all, you are a carrier of the fire of God. And when they describe him, the man is like this. He's putting on this. Uh, he has this beard. And he said, it is Elijah. Even the king knew. For you to know that the king knew that Elijah was there. But because people who want to do evil, they won't come to the light. They won't come to the path of righteousness. They will not come and find out what is the purpose, what the mind of God is. Now, he said, it is Elijah. But you know what the king said? He wanted to use his authority. He sent soldiers, go and get Elijah arrested for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what I'm saying. Contained by what? Contained by what? Talk to me. Contained by what? And by the time they were coming, Elijah was on the top of the hill. The young Bateguni. Maybe it's just relaxing on the top of the mountain. Hey, you will catch fire. Yeah. And when they were coming to arrest him, 50 soldiers and the leader said, Come down, man of God. You are under arrest. And Elijah said, Me? What an insult. If I am a servant of God, let fire come down and consume the 50. And the fire came down. Pyam. I don't want to read the story. You know, after they, you know, the devil, if he's in the heart of a person, he will not allow that person to learn quickly. The king heard that 50 people have been died by fire. He sent another one. Praise God. Another set of 50. If I'm a servant of God, 
let the fire come down and consume them. Now, he was not contending with words. He was not contending with physical soldiers. He was a man, a one-man battalion. By the virtue of what he carried, he was a man that could confront kingdoms. He was a man that king, we hear about him and they are terrified. Hallelujah. It was just like the man that is called John Knox. John Knox was a missionary, was an intercessor in the United Kingdom in those days. Now that John Knox, the man that was that will continue to pray and pray and change times and season and turn things around and the queen of England he made an open confession he said I am afraid of the prayer of John Knox more than all the artillery of the United Kingdom that this woman his prayer is dangerous more than all the weapons of war that Britain have and Britain could gather that one man his prayer is more terrible than all the weapons, all the machine guns, all the all the all the missiles. May you be that kind of a man that carry fire and the kingdom of darkness tremble when they hear your name. You remember the seven sons of Scaphas? They went, they thought that it is cheap to carry fire, that it is cheap, you know, to demonstrate and say, Yes, I am of God, I am of God. They went out to cast out, they saw a demon possessed person. They said, Yes, yes, sir, let's do this one. Seven sons from the same family. Fools! They said, In the name of Jesus, that Paul is preaching, we cast you out. The demon person look at them with one kind eye. And the man, I think he reverse. He come again. <clears throat> you know, he reverse again. He look at them. He survey all of them. One by one. One by one. Seven people together. And the man and the demon spoke and said, Jesus, I know. Paul that you mentioned, uh -uh, in the kingdom of darkness, his name rings. But who are you? And the man handles seven people they could not escape from him. Demons. If you don't have fire, demons will mess your life up. If you don't have fire, you have nothing to contend with. I tell you, Satan is there to mess you up. And he handles seven people. He beat them to pulp. He turned their dresses. They went home naked. Ah, it is better for you not to be disgraced before you learn lesson. It is better for you to acquire fire of God and maintain the fire of God in your life so that the demon, the enemy will not, you know, will not mess you up. This is the time, the time we want to know those who are connected properly, who are connected to the power source, who are connected to the fire of the Holy Spirit, who are carriers of God, who are carriers of the fire of God. It is time for the church to arise. It is time for believers to arise. Anything that is questioning who you are. It is not by the words of mouth. That the fire will answer for you. That your pronouncement. Carry authority. Your pronouncement. Carry fire. I was sharing with the leaders yesterday. That I was, I, 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 when I was praying. You know yesterday. And I was reading Acts chapter 2. And I just I mean. Go to Acts chapter 2. And I now began to see. That look. When the, when the Holy Ghost came down. When the fire came down. The Bible says. The fire came down. As what? Cloving tongues. What do I call it? Talk to me. Cloving tongues of fire. The description of that fire has to do with tongues. When a man has fire, it is not your leg that carry fire. The leg may be anointed, praise God. But when the Bible says, whatever, I mean, uh, I mean, you know, whatever the soul of your feet shall touch, it is given to you. If you walk there, if you don't talk, you won't get it. In my name, you will cast out demons. If you don't talk, it's not going to happen. Whatever. Whatever I hand, my hand, well, I lay my hands upon, I'm going to do what? I will prosper. Dry your hands and seal your mouth. A closed mouth is a, cold, is a closed destiny. Amen? Nothing is going to happen. You can see that when the clothing of tongues came, 
it is called clothing of tongues. It has to do with their tongues. It has to do with what they say. You must get to a point that your words does not fall to the ground. May you get that anointing. The Bible says you will decree a thing. It shall be established. And the light will shine along your way. Now You will decree. You will speak out. Elijah spoke out. said, if I am a man of God. He did not do pre-prayer. Alright? It was, he was not doing pre-prayer. He was just demonstrating what he carried. What was in his life? Say, said, if I am a man of God, let fire come. And fire came. Because his word is honored by heaven. He was a carrier of fire. There is something that is burning inside of him. There is something that is connected to his mouth. That when he makes a pronouncement, something is going to happen. That's why he was known as a prophet of fire. I am saying people of God, when you carry fire, your prayer with your tongue, anything you ask, you make pronouncement, is going to be so. If you carry fire, your message, if you're a preacher, if you're a counselor, when you say cancel people and you cancel lives and lives are not transformed, it's because something is wrong with your tongue. Your tongue is not a carrier of fire. The Holy Ghost baptism you claim to have, go and check it again. Maybe you have to go back and plug yourself to the fire source so that you will be able to have your tongue changed by fire. That anything you say is stands. Anything you say is sticks. He say, if I am a man of God, and that is why the fire came. You must learn to contend by fire. When you are born again, now let me just read some few things. There is no way fire external will be deployed without the fire internal. There is no way fire external. Release of fire is going to be released that going to be demonstrating of fire without internal fire. You must make sure you secure the fire of God inside of you. And that's what my prayer for you. I have prayed for you and I'm still praying for you now that your prayer altar will receive fire. There are so many people your, part, your altar of prayer is full of ashes. Is full of the fire has burned out. Your life is your prayer. Your prayer life is dead or is cold. You need to get the fire back on your altar. That your prayer begin <coughs> to make impact. Begin to make difference in the lives of people. Say amen. amen. So that's it. Without the internal fire, there is nothing to release outside. Be sure you are coming from the place of fire. Before you shout the fire of the Holy Ghost, which is the external. Now you see, so many people today, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. Uh, when you mention we are praying prayer, you mention in the, by the blood, by plead the blood, ah, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. <laughs> you know, you are saying, you know, I release the fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. Keep quiet. If there is nothing you carry, you are just shouting in vain. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But is it everybody that is saved? Is it everybody that called the name of Jesus in the times of danger that is saved? If there is no corresponding faith, if there is no connection, you are just speaking empty words. You can carry, crash out Holy Ghost fire. If you are not a carrier of fire, nothing will come out. Is somebody following me? Nothing will be demonstrated. You must, you must search yourself. Because Elijah was a carrier of fire. And that's why when he was even on the top of the mountain, whether he just went to relax. You know, you don't, he's a dangerous man. Any time you meet Elijah, <laughs> praise God. You know what he did to the prophet of Baals? How many of thousands that he slaughtered? When he was on the mount, you know, of Camel, and he called down the fire. Said the God that answered by fire. You know he was speaking with assurance. Abby. He, that was no consultation. He did not pray before he was saying that. He knew what he was made of. He said okay let's have a contest. You prophet of Baal. 400 come. Oh yeah let's raise an altar. Do everything. Take your own bullock. Kill it. Do whatever you want to do. Start first. Let's see how far you can go. After all you are 400. By the time 400 people shout fire 
At least something is going to happen. The God, you see, you are not going to put physical fire. It is God that answered it by fire. That is the true God. He gave, it was a challenge. He did not consult God before he threw that challenge. Is somebody following me? Because he was a carrier of fire. He was a carrier of fire. And by the time, he, you know, he got there, the, from morning till evening, they mess up themselves. People came and said, come, your bar, this same bar that this king has gone to contact, he said, your bar, maybe he has struggled. He must come back home. Or he's sleeping. Ah, he must wake up. But those people, you see, the way he taunted them, the way he made jest of them, you know, some people, you see, they are more committed to their idols more than the way Christians are committed to their God. And though those who happen, the Bible says, ah, they became more mad. The Bible says they began to cut themselves with lancet, with blades, with everything. Ah, bah, hero, bah, hero, bah, hero. And the Bible says blood was coming out of their body. You know, they injured themselves so that bah will respond. There was no sound. And Elijah came in the evening and said, are you exhausted? Pack this side. He rebuilt the altar of God. He put bullock. He said, okay, pour water. If you are Elijah, will you go to that extent? Praise God. He said, pour water. They pour water. He said, it's not enough. Pour water. Is it pour water that's supposed to quench the fire, Abby? But now it is fire that quench water. When they pour water, it, no wonder the Bible said, those who know their God, they shall be strong and that shall do exploit. All these scriptures, they are not just mere quotation. It must be, there must be a chemistry, a fire chemistry inside of you. Something that is, that is agitating in your mind. You want to explode. You don't see all these small, small boys, all these hooligans that have one juju or the other. Do you see the way they brag themselves? Eh? The way they brag themselves and say, say, if you are said, they say, ah, he's a dangerous guy, oh. he's a dangerous guy, oh. he has, uh, ah, he has, uh, one day. he has one charm, he has one ring, and people, be, be, they will be afraid of him. When it's coming like this, everybody say, ah, chairman, chairman, chair. he's not chair anything, oh, but because of his status of the demon that is carrying, he's a chairman to them. They begin to hell him. Nobody cross his path. Praise the Lord. If they want to marry somebody, he marries that person by fire by force. If he said that you must not come to this garage again, nobody born you, you are not going to come. Even go to governor of the state, the governor cannot deliver you. How many of you understand that the governor cannot save them? Praise the Lord. Somebody is building a building house, a friend is building a house somewhere and I was there and uh, now trying to help him to do something. And they, they, they came, they were telling the person on side and said, look, we want to collect money. He said, go and report us to any police station you like. Amen. He said, even I, Jim Abby, the former governor, when he was doing so, so and so, he gave us our money. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because they are the people the politicians are using. They know that they carry something that even those politicians, they don't carry. They don't have. You don't understand. And that's how they could brag. So there are people like that. But can you see? This is a man who knew what he carried. He said, pour water, pour water. And said, God, that these people may know that you are the true God. I know you. They don't know you. Just show them. He did not even say, let fire come down. He has said, the contest is fire versus fire. Let's see fire you can generate. Let's see fire can generate. That is the basis of the contest. He did not call that fire. He has said it. That God that answered by fire is the true God. And God was behind him. Hallelujah. When it was his turn, he was just a God, I know you. You are this and that. And the fire came down. Shout hallelujah. You must contend with fire. Some of the things that are happening in our world, you can't survive without fire. This is the day that people are depressed. This is the day that people are confused. This is the day that people are tired. And people are complaining on the streets. 
you know, a lot of situation, a lot of things. Now, you don't even have assurance if you go into a business whether you succeed or not. Praise God. Now, it takes a person who has God, the backup of heaven, to do exploit this time around. The forces of darkness that are trying, that are that are causing troubles. You need you take people who have the corresponding power to confront them. It is not by words; it is by fire. Learn to fight by fire. Learn to be a carrier of fire. Make sure that the fire is generated. Now, there are some things that I want to take to take note. Number one, your salvation status. When you are born again, you carry a measure of authority. The first thing is that you must be born again. We are talking about fire. You can't fight with fire. You can't be a carrier of fire if you are not born again. That you are redeemed. You are transformed. The blood of Jesus poured you. You are a child of God. Your names are written in the book of life. You must secure that. I am born again. I am a child of God. It is not that they said I am born again. It's not they said. Because you have done water baptism, mistakenly you can be baptized and yet you are not born again. But somebody who is born again must know that he's born again. Salvation from sin. You are a child of God. That is the false confidence. You have a measure of authority. That is the basis. The second thing is the Holy Ghost baptism status. You must have the baptism of the Holy Ghost status. Now, we talk about fire. You must continue to desire the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you are here to speak in tongue, don't give up. Don't say, ah, well, it is not meant for me. No, the Bible says it is for everyone. That is what Peter said in chapter 2. Is that not so? He said, this blessing is for everyone. Repent and you will be baptized. So, you must desire a man who is craving for fire. You want to be baptized. You know, I'm speaking in tongues. And even if you're already speaking in tongues, you want more anointing. Is that not so? To speak more in tongues. Because tongues is a language. Is the language from somewhere to help you to flow in the place of prayer. To generate more fire. And of course, it could also be the, uh, uh, the language of the angels. So, you must flow in the place of speaking in tongues. Don't just wait on the vocabulary that you have. The few sentences you know. Ask for more anointing. Ask for more infilling of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So, it's very important. We must desire. I've talked about salvation status. Then Holy Ghost baptism status. The third one is the fire status. Hallelujah. Is the fire status. Now, when you have the fire status, you want to contend with fire, then you must have the fire status. And the fire status has level. The level of the fire you have will determine the level you can operate. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Is somebody following me? Ask yourself from the, when you wake up and say, what is the, what is the level? What is the gauge of my fire? <laughs> Hallelujah. Like you, you have spiritual thermometer. You have thermometer. What's thermometer? Is you to measure temperature, Abi? Uh, uh, remind me, am I right? Am I correct? Uh -huh. It's to measure, you know, you know there are a lot of something gauge. Uh -huh. Now, to measure the level of how your body is hot. Eh? There must be a spiritual thermometer through your spirit man to ask yourself, Francis, what level are you today? Hey man, you are going out, what level are you operating today? How much of fire have you added to your fire? Hallelujah. And that's why your prayer in the morning is very, very crucial. Your time of prayer in a day. Oh, maybe you are so busy in the morning, you have to rush to the place of work. You must create time to generate this fire. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. The level of generator you have will determine the output of the power. Am I right? Answer me now. Are you expecting fire this morning? The way you are answering. I, 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 I wonder. Praise God. Now, if you have 5.5 point, I mean 2.5 kVA, 
it has a level of what it can bring out if you have five point something or six point six, six kva generator it has a higher output it is a capacity that will determine the level of delivery if you use 5.2.5 kva to carry some level of light and equipment i tell you that some light that's supposed to shine brighter will continue will be dim is that not so because of the capacity of that generator and now if you leave from that and you move to diesel generator diesel generator has greater power am i right where is paul this generator has greater power amen. amen hallelujah now it has a greater power you know for productivity for release of power hallelujah and you begin not to see great he said it's 40 kva it's 50 kva it is this kva the, KVA. the level of the generator will determine the power output the same thing, the level of fire you carry will determine the level of your output. Praise God. I say praise the Lord. The demons, they can mess up anybody. It was in a camp meeting, a camp meeting in my former church, you know, in those days that there were you know, people, somebody need deliverance. And the lady was to be minister deliverance. They were minister deliverance to a lady. And everybody was coming. I mean, some minister are there. Hey, car, car, you know, get out. We cast you out. This and that. Even the deal, the shouting, and the demon did not go out. Is the level of the fire those people carry. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know what Jesus Christ said? Jesus said, if I cast out demons by the what? the finger of God then the kingdom of God has come there is a finger of God there must be a level of fire that is coming out when you make a decree it determines how fast those people you know in those places some people who are prayer band people and they are to undo deliverance cases from morning till evening they will labor on one person. I won't go out. God, no. Where are you from? I am from Caterpillar, Caterpillar. Where is that Caterpillar? It is in the marine world. I am a queen. Get out. No. She belongs to me. And you see, Ft men, pastors. It is small, little by little, they will remove the, their coat. After the something is not coming out, they will remove the tie. And they will be sweating. No! I won't go out. And at the end of the day, it may not come out. I say, okay, okay, we'll continue tomorrow. And the man will go home and say, please, get me a bar. <laughs> because all energy is gone. And he will sit down and eat a bar. Shout hallelujah. He's the level of fire. Is the level of fire. Hallelujah. And wherever Jesus Christ appeared, he saw the man of Gadara. It is not because it's Jesus. I don't know whether you understand. It is because when he was here, he was man. But because, <coughs> excuse me, he has taught us how to generate fire. How to have the power. He will wake up, he will pray. He will seek the face of God. He was coming and the, blade, and the man who was possessed, he was just passing through. The man of Gadara saw him. He ran towards him. What did he do? He worshipped him. And before Jesus began to come, he said, ah, eh, eh, don't send us away. Don't send us away. You Jesus of Nazareth, we know who you are. You are the son of God. He said, keep your mouth shut. So how many of you are there? He said, we are legions. We are because we are many. We are many. And listen, okay, all right. Okay, we know, we know, we know you want to send us out. Okay, look at the swine there. Send us into the swine. They just they destroyed the economy of that man. <laughs> that whole thing, you know. Praise God. If you don't have fire, the business will be affected. Hello? You understand what I'm saying now? Those demons, they enter into it's not because they are pigs. People are still doing pig business today. Hallelujah. Now, they are, they are pigs. 
But because the owner of the pigs don't have fire, that's why the demon will say, okay, we will manage that place. We will manage that place. God forbid, the demon say, okay, you want to send us out? Okay, let's go to number so, so, and so, and so, and so. We'll go and manage, you know, that place. We'll stay there. And these of them to go to where they're supposed to go, they will go and manage your house. God forbid in Jesus' name. But you know it is happening. You cast out demons somewhere, they enter into another house. Hallelujah. My geo said it. He told me, my geo in those days, you know, he narrated the story. He said he just discovered in his house. Hallelujah. A preacher of holiness. A man of God. That the wife served food. You know when you serve food, you bring plate of food. You no? Know? Uh, maybe the pandadiam or the amala supposed to be here. The soup supposed to be here. Amen. Inside the tray, you bring it like that, Abby. But now, the woman bring it like this way. That the soup is, uh, the soup is air. The amala is air. How, how should such a pest, such thing, you know, return to, I mean, cause fights between husband and wife? He brought the tray like this. He make you turn it and continue to eat. But the devil is a liar. He began to make case after. I have told you. Eh? You don't bring this in like this. Eh? It's supposed to be like this. The soup supposed to be here. The whatever supposed to be here. So, which means your hand travel from right to left. Right to left. But how can you be traveling from here to here before you enter into here? Small thing. Geo and Geo's wife. And say it was it became a kind of argument. I, I have told you this and that, this and that. You know, there are times, no matter how gentle our wives is, ah, I say, ah, why can't you turn it? Why is it a big thing? But he said the force in how the a day before that time it flashed to the to, to the man of God. He said he saw a demon on their dining table. Like like um uh like uh what is uh, obona, obona? What do you call monkey? <laughs> like a monkey on the dining table. Praise God. No, no, it's not monkey. Say it's all dog. Dog, dog, aja, on the dining table. And of course, it's a demon. And in the revelation, he cast out, he sent away that dog. And you now remember that that dog fell into the second compound into a flat in the second compound praise god he said so he discovered that after he settled that thing that the second day eh, between husband and wife in that flat battle started they started fighting from morning to evening they went to sleep they woke up the second day hallelujah you don't know how many demon people send that out out if you don't have fire they'll make your place and say we'll go manage this flat if you want to scatter one marriage, you cannot scatter this one. Eh? This one has no fire. We go scatter this one. At least let the mission of scattering marriage let it be fulfilled. If you cannot scatter this one, we we'll scatter this one. But because many of us will lack the spiritual eyes, may God anoint your eyes. May your eyes be anointed by the fire of the Holy Spirit that you begin to see, so that you be able to know how to deal with the situations around you. People cast out demons. They can enter into another man's business and that business begins to go down. So when people are praying in their own, uh, in their own business and saying, in the name of Jesus, somebody comes to his shop in the morning, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command <coughs> blessings. Hallelujah. I command blessings upon this business. Every demonic operations against my business, I cast you out, I bind you, no way for you. Do you do that in your business? If somebody casts his own out, you jump into your own shop. That day you no go sell. You just be, you are just, you are just stay in the shop like, uh, you'll be looking like Luko said. From morning to evening. I say, ah, why bucket is dull today? Ah, it's because some demons who are causing economic uh, hardship. Okay? 
Now, somebody have thrown them out of his environment and they must, they, don't, they must not go to Satan and say they disgrace them. They must go and ah, devil say you, they disgrace you and you come to report to me and you don't have another place to stay until further notice. <laughs> Praise God. You must learn to contend by fire. You must learn to fight. Nothing is natural. You must take your stand. You must take your position. You must know what you want for your life. What you want for your destiny. So the increase in your fire must be on daily basis. That is why you pray. If you read the Bible in the Acts of the Apostles. In Acts chapter 2 they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. But if you see them praying at another time they say they are filled. And the pray, prayer we are, we are praying was shaking. And what? They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. That is the increase in the fire. So don't just sit down and think that ah, everything is alright. Everything, no problem. There are problems though. There are forces of darkness. They are looking for a job to do. They are looking for businesses to destroy. They are looking for marriages to scatter. Some things that, you see at times as a counselor, I will listen to husband and wife, some things that are causing problems in their marriage. You begin to wonder, what kind of thing is this one? You just thought this one is not enough to cause fight. Abi? But it is demon that is behind it. It is demon that is behind it. I told you many, many years in the 80s, you know, that, uh, that uh, the, 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 the Christians, the wishes had meeting, you know, they wanted to go to 40 days fasting and prayer, which is in America. They went to 40 days of fasting and prayer and they said they are asking something from Lucifer. Lucifer, our activities have been greatly, you know, hindered by Christian families. We want you to help us to break Christian homes. And they went into fasting. Some Christian had a revelation. They had about that information and it was, it was dispensed or shared among the Christians. The Christians in America say it's a lie. It's not going to happen. Jesus is loud. Jesus is loud. Satan is a liar. Satan is a liar. The thing is a matter of grammar. Satan is a liar. Satan is a liar. No, we're going to pray. And they went, they mobilized prayers, those who had, and they went to go and do three days fasting. Satanists are doing 40 days. They did three days. You know, in their own, they, will sing, they can drink coffee in their own fasting. Hallelujah. I'm fasting. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Praise God. Praise God. After 40 days, Christian homes began to break. You say, where is God? It's a matter of fire. Some people make sacrifice to destroy. You heard about it. You cannot do anything. Why can't you do chains of prayer and make your own 100 days? Praise God. Uh, they are not more than Christians. You understand what I'm saying now? And begin to pray. And begin to fast and pray. Because it's the privilege information God has made available. There are some of you who have some dreams about what the devil is planning. What do you do about it? At times you see what you see there are some things happening in my marriage and you begin to look at it. Why is this thing happening? Instead for you to rise up to deal with the power behind it, you'll be blaming your wife. It is you. Your mama no teach you very well. The head of that one also will spark. Eh, you are insulting my mama. <laughs> Praise God. And the man also, you see, and the woman also, you see, you see, you see, you that they teach, maybe you see how your life is. Eh? Since I'm entering into your house, my life, my life is not like this. You know, she be, you see my skin. It's my skin like this before. How before you know it? Bass, boss, who start? Amen. Can you imagine when you fight? Husband and wife, you fight. And God open your eyes. You see demon. That is causing me. <laughs> yes. I have a report to make to your girl at the top. I achieved something today. The devil never succeed over your marriage. The devil never succeed over your children. You must take charge of your environment. Take charge of your spiritual constituency. Take charge of everything God has committed to your hands. You must be on fire. So you must ask yourself, what is my fire status? This, my daughter, Sister Yingara, is here. She made a statement years back. She must have forgotten. 
when we were still having fellowship, she made that statement. She said that they, I don't know what we are talking. She said, ah, she made that statement maybe close to 27 years ago now. As a pastor, as their leader, you know, that was the first time I heard that statement. She made that statement, and that statement keep on ringing in my spirit up to today. Be your The more you pray, the beautiful your life will be. Is it not true? If you don't pray, your life will not be beautiful. The level of your beauty you see in your life, in your marriage, in your home, in the life of your children, you know, hallelujah, it is the beauty you see. Praise God. I say praise the Lord. God never holds any man. A man who can pray, you will see the hand of God. Praise God. Even if things look rough, if it looks tough, she's seated here, I can use her life, you know, to preach. Praise God. There are some people that have used them, you know, as an example, who have been part of this journey. I know that in the time, you know, marriage, you know, there was a kind, not because they know, they a wonderful man as husband, you know, that things were tough, you know, here and there, here and there, hallelujah. But sometimes when the, who, who was even doing wedding or, okay, my daughter's wedding and sent, you know, uh, a daughter to come and give gifts, you know, to my daughter, praise God, for my daughter's wedding. Then later, maybe we were talking on phone. And when I heard, when he was telling me that one of our children, our children is studying medicine in Abuja. One is studying, this, the other one wanted to study law, the one that came to me, Abby, and the other one, he said, wow, it is true, prayer pays, and it pays to serve Jesus. There is nobody who has passed through this ministry who have labored with us, you know, from one stage to the other, and those of you that are still here, that you are faithfully serving. I can see the beauty of God in your life from one level of glory to the other are happening if you listen to the word of God if you are faithful to the word of God you are going to have testimony if you are not lazy in the things of the spirit if you cast the revelation of the word of God Jesus said the word I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life if you keep on keep on you get the fire in your life you make sure the fire continue to glow then you are going to see the result because of time the last one is dominion status when talking about dominion system, this is the level when you speak, there is performance. It is a level of absolute authority. Angels, fire, everything obey your commands. Amen. Amen. The first status is salvation status. You must have it. Keep it every time that you are born again. The second one is a Holy Ghost baptism status. Continue to seek after it. Hallelujah. And make sure that you have it. The third one is fire status. Make sure the level of your fire keep on increasing on a daily basis. So that you have something to contend with. The last one is dominion status. Take charge. Speak out. The fire you have is not just to be, you know, to be, to be dominant. It must be active. Somebody hearing me? You exercise dominion over situation, over circumstance. You exercise dominion because you know what you carry. That was what Elijah was doing. He was exercising dominion. He understood what he carries. He understood that his word will not fall to the ground. The Bible describes Samuel as a man whose word never fell to the ground. There are status like that that your word never falls to the ground. God is there to honor you. And if you see such people, they are dangerous men. Be careful. Hallelujah. I said it the other time. I said, we may be age mates, but we are not grace mates. There is a difference between age and I say, ah, I see on him. He's a small boy. Oh, this campus, campus Christian. I told you that some of this is this camp. <clears throat> we started that by our ministry from the campus. Is the campus that produce all these ladies that I'm talking about? Amen. Is the campus ministry that produced them? Now, if they did not carry fire, they will not be alive. After many years now, married and they are still keeping the fire in the faith. So don't tell those young young people. Don't just look down on them, because the sacrifice they are making, many adults cannot make it. It is somebody who makes sacrifice who maintain the fire. That is when. 
You know, when we labor on campus, we come on campus and we are still by the grace of God, we are where we are. Hallelujah. May you maintain fire. May the fire of God not die in your life. We're going to pray a few prayer points. One thing I want you to understand, there are powers contending with the fire of God in your life. We call them the altars. There are altars that has raised in your environment, on your street, in your in the way, place where you rent, we environment. There are territorial altars. There are wishes. There are wizards. All right. There are occultic people. You see them doing things from time to time. They will carry corn. They will spread it on the street. God have mercy. You wake up in the morning and you march on those corn. Hallelujah. Maybe they have said as many that march on this corn today. Every glory of their life, you know, is scattered away. And you just wake up. Some people don't even look at ground when they are walking. You don't march. Hallelujah. But when a Christian, whether you look ground or you look down, you march. Hey, fire for fire. Hallelujah.